the power of prophetic intercession the bible is very clear as to the fact that there is the ministry of the intercessor that intercession is a ministry and that all believers without reservation are called into that ministry in as much as there are people who are uniquely graced to be intercessors but that the ministry of intercession like the work of the evangelist who named the name of Christ first Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 first Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1 to 4 please pay attention I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men reading to verse 4 for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life that means the quietness and the peace of that territory does not just depend on what happens in the government house does not just depend on what happens technologically that the saints have an assignment in maintaining peace over their territories in all godliness and honesty verse 3 for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who desires that all men be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth and all this happens through the ministry of intercession we intercede for all men for kings for nobles for those in authority Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25 Listen to this and look at it very carefully. Wherefore, he is able to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him because of a mystery, seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession. It is because he makes intercession that we know salvation can reach to the uttermost. He is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God seeing that there is a ministry that he engages in that does not fail that he makes intercession for them what is intercession intercession is not just mere prayer what is intercession the word intercede means to midwife the word intercede means to become a bridge. Please pay attention. The word intercede means to stand in the gap. Are we together now? Yes. So intercession gives the idea of mediating over a person, over a people, so that the counsel of darkness, spiritually speaking now, does not prevail over their life and so that the purposes of God find expression over their lives. To intercede means to stand in the gap in prayer over individuals, over families, over cities, over territories, over nations to the intent that number one, the purposes and the counsel of darkness be thwarted over those individuals and number two the purposes of Christ be enthroned the assignment of intercession seeks to do two things number one to prohibit the hand of Satan the plot of darkness over individuals and then it seeks to release the purposes of God to find expression you have to understand this the intercessory ministry has to do with stopping the hand of darkness because i hope you know from scripture that the church being the light of the world is the principal limitation to the reign of darkness is that true yes that it, the presence of the church is the reason why evil cannot prevail 
intercession withholding the plot of darkness over individuals over families over nations over territories and allowing the course of the kingdom to find expression many believers do not understand the place of prophetic intercession in birthing the purposes of God over the lives of individuals and territories are we blessed Ezekiel chapter 22 let's read from verse 23 please pay attention to this scripture Ezekiel 22 from verse 23 and the word of the Lord came unto me saying son of man say unto her thou art a land that is not cleansed nor reigned upon in the day of indignation there is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof like a roaring lion ravening the prey they have devoured souls they have taken the treasure and precious things they have made her many they have made her many widows in the midst thereof 26 her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things they have put no difference between holy and profane neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my sabbath and i am profaned among them next verse her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey this is a description of the state of a territory to shed blood are you aware of the latest passion you see in our region over human sacrifices does that give you any concern this is what the bible is saying to shed blood and to destroy souls to the intent that they get dishonest gain 28 and her prophets have doubted them an untempered mortar seeing vanity and divining lies unto them saying thus saith the lord when the lord has not spoken 29 the people of the land have used oppression and have exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and the needy yea they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully next verse and i sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge that is the spiritual definition of intercession and stand in the gap before me for what the land not just for the people that i should not destroy it but i found the consequence next verse therefore i have poured out my indignation upon them i have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own ways i have recompensed upon their heads say yet the lord god can i tell you this tragedy awaits any territory tragedy awaits any family tragedy awaits any people group that ignores the ministry of prophetic intercession i tell you why darkness seems to prevail over territories unhindered because there are christians there are prayer warriors but there are very few intercessors the selfishness of believers that has come as a result of immaturity and lack of spiritual growth has also translated to their prayer lives just because you are praying does not mean you are walking in spiritual accuracy are we blessed there are many examples of intercession in scripture i'll pick three to help us understand that intercession is a powerful ministry number one let's go to the patriarch abraham the bible says look unto abraham your father and to sarah that body so we are looking up to him to study in genesis chapter 18 please give us from verse 16 remember the visitation of the three angels that came to abraham haven't served them the bible says and the men arose long reading be patient 
they arose up from tents and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. Uh -huh. Very quickly, please. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely be a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him that they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord might bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken. 20. And the Lord said, listen carefully now, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from tents and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous and the wicked? This is the character of an intercessor. Please go to 23. Are you seeing here that whether Sodom is destroyed or not, it was none of his business. But he reached out to say, look, I, I do not mean to dishonor you, but are you also going to destroy the righteous and the wicked? Next verse. Per adventure, there be 50 righteous within that city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for 50 righteous that are therein that be, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked and that the righteous should not be as the wicked, that be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Look at, look at, look at, look at him engaging intelligence in intercession. And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within that city, what a city. Then I will spare all the place for their sake. And Abraham answered and said, behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which I am but dust and ashes. 28. Per adventure, there shall lack five of the 50 righteous will thou destroy the city for lack of five and he said if i find 40 and five i will not destroy it 29 and he spake unto him yet again and said per adventure there shall be 40 found there and he said i will not do it for 40's sake abraham is it not enough watch an intercessor and he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure, there shall thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure, there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. You are even tired already. You that is reading the story. You see how you are weary and tired. I say, what I Abraham. Are we together? And he said, oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure 10 shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 10. I will not destroy it for the sake of ten. Abraham was safe. Abraham was fine. Listen to the commendation that God said about Abraham. That as far as you and your children are, I know you will teach them right. Yet, Abraham, hold on here. We want to go and visit a territory. And he said, please, I know that it's not my concern. But intercession has made it my concern. Will you destroy the righteous and the wicked example number two jesus jesus the intercessor 
Luke chapter 22 from verse 31. Luke 22 from verse 31. Remember the story of Simon and Satan coming into him? And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee. I didn't pray for myself. That means Satan would have prevailed because the spiritual intelligence to immune yourself from his effect, you do not yet have it. But I bridge that gap in prayer that thy faith fail not. And when you are converted, use this strategy of intercession to also secure your brethren that while they are still learning the ways of God Satan will not have advantage of them that means when you are converted become an intercessor and the people you train train them to also become intercessors John 17 look at the ministry of intercession verse 1 Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven watch Jesus intercede now Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may glorify thee. Uh -huh. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Three, this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. He says, I have glorified thee in the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Five, now, O oh, Father, glorify me with thy own self and with the glory that I had with thee from before the world was. Uh -huh. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me, and they have kept your word. Verse 7. Now they have known all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Verse 8. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me and they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee and they have believed that thou didst send me verse 9 I pray for them I pray for them Jesus the intercessor I pray for them I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Verse 10. It says, all and all mine are thine, and thine is mine, and I am glorified in them. Watch the prayer of Jesus now. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. And it says, keep through thy own name those that thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are this is why I know the oneness of the body of Christ must come to pass because the person who prayed that prayer request was Jesus himself regardless the differences you see now there is something called the unity of faith are we together hmm. Romans chapter 8 and verse 34 for sake of time we're looking at Jesus the intercessor. Romans 8, 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God. Who also makes intercession for us. That even after he resurrected, after his coronation, crowning him Lord, he still today makes intercession for the saints third example of intercession in scripture the early church acts chapter 12. i hope you know that the condition for anything to be a doctrine there is theologically speaking now anything is a doctrine if and when it was adumbrated in the Old Testament, condition number one. It was captured in the life and the experience of Jesus, number two. And it was practiced in the early church, number three. Any truth and any mystery that does not satisfy that threefold condition cannot be called a doctrine. 
it must be adumbrated foreshadowed in the old testament it must be captured in the life the earth work of jesus and it must have been practiced by the early church are we together acts chapter 12 let's start our reading from verse 1 now about the time herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church too and he killed james the brother of john with the sword and because he saw it that it pleased the jews he proceeded further are you seeing what happens when we don't pray notice that the spirit of the antichrist was the one walking through herod he there were three people who were with jesus at the mount of transfiguration i hope you know there were different classification of the disciples is that true there was the 72 there was the 12 there was the three and then there was john the beloved all of them had different experiences there was something the 12 had that the 72 did not have there was something the three saw that the remaining 12 did not see satan knowing this began to handpick those he will destroy peter james and john remember the pillars he destroyed james they beheaded james historically speaking and he saw that it pleased the people and he went straight to peter if he was done with peter he would have destroyed john there was something now you read the gospel and you find out read the writings of these three people james peter john aside from the pauline epistles you read their exegesis on on, on on the truth of god's word there were mysteries that were given to them and satan knowing this the spirit of the antichrist were coming there the spirits that move across territories herod just thought he was being political because it pleased them he wanted to kill them so that the people would like him but he did not know he was under the influence over that territory the Bible says, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further. Say, no way. Shout it. Say, no way. no way. Evil will always proceed further when there are no intercessors. Let me tell you this. Satan will come to a family and test something and watch the reaction. If all that he sees is just discussion and carnal analysis, he will proceed I tell you, Satan has the ability to proceed further if unhindered. Look at this. He proceeded further to take Peter also. He tested your finances and you kept quiet. You just assumed nothing was wrong. Your health is coming. I assure you, whatever Satan touches in your life and around your environment is not the only thing he wants. He wants everything. But he will touch something first and watch the reaction. If he finds out you are lukewarm and cold and careless and it does not matter, Everybody in the family just became sick overnight. I'm sure it's just the weather. He's coming again. He will proceed further. The Bible says, Then were the days of unleavened bread. Verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, Peter now, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending that after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter would have died. Peter was kept in the prison. Help me read believers. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. That means everything Satan planned would have happened. But a midwife came in. A prophetic midwife. Parasuda Pakata. This night a grace is coming on someone that listen based on the architecture of satan it is like a spiritual room they have plotted your family already they have plotted everything and is signed already time for execution but they did not factor you in that plan hear me the reason why job became a victim of what he saw was because there was no intercessor to stand for job if there was an intercessor satan would be wasting his time hear me the catastrophe did not just touch just job's children because he was an intercessor for them 
but no one was an intercessor for him so when the devil got their intercessor he got them too but prayer was made without season of the church unto God for your office for Nigeria for your family for your business for your village prayer was made unto God that means could it be that it was not the plan of God for James to die could it be that their intercessory ministry came late so that lateness made one person to pay the price could it be that John the Baptist was beheaded easily and cheaply because there was no intercessor we know that Jesus was preserved because there were two strange intercessors Simeon the prophet and Anna the prophetess otherwise they would have killed Jesus oh. please sit down prayers was made unto God to, by the church for him let's read verse 6 last verse and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door of the prison let's finish up and put perspective to it verse 7 and behold at the instance of intercession the angel of the Lord question where was that angel with James if we do not understand the principles or the mystery of prophetic intercession our territory will remain godless our territory will remain helpless our families will remain bankrupt of the power and the salvation of Jesus Christ now principles of prophetic intercession let me teach you the principles of prophetic intercession in another series we're going to be dealing um, deeper but just to give the foundation the intercessory ministry is based on two principal foundations please listen carefully the intercessory ministry is based on two principal foundations number one the law of love the first foundation upon which the intercessory ministry rests is the law of love love for God and love for people first timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 tells us that god desires that all men be saved and then when they are saved that they don't just stop there but that they grow and mature and come into the knowledge of the truth so the intercessory ministry is founded on the law of love you cannot become an intercessor when there is self alive in you remember my definition of love the absence of self you are walking in love to the degree that there is the absence of self why go through the labor of prayer the labor of fasting the labor of stretching and discomforting yourself over an issue that is not your business can I tell you this as you will be learning everything you make happen for someone you are delivering yourself to from that trouble that was the mistake of Esther when Esther had a chance to advocate she was in the palace she was already immune don't forget this is the wife of the king and Mordecai sent a warning to her he said if you leave us God will raise another help for us but when they are done with us when they find out you are a Jew too 
You will see what will happen to you in that palace. And Esther said, no, 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 no. She put on her sackcloth and ashes. He said, I'm, I'm going to the king, but let us fast and pray. Pray for me so that I can intercede for you too. They were all, all intercessors for one another. They prayed for her. And she went before the king, violated the ordinance of approaching his presence. And yet he lifted the golden censer because prayer had gone up. If she just stepped in carelessly and casually, that inner chamber, that would have been the last time. What happened to Vashti? At least Vashti was driven away. She would have been killed. You know those days they kill. They don't forgive. No counseling, no nothing. They kill straight to the point. The law of love. You see, most of what we do as believers that we think is spirituality is just a marketing of flesh. There is such a, let me tell you this, you know you are growing spiritually to the degree to which you and your interest decreases. Where you are burdened with the purposes of the kingdom greater than your personal desires. That was temptation number one. When Satan came to Jesus, temptation number one was your individual appetite. Turn this stone to bread. You are hungry. You need bread. Forget about your assignment and what your father sent you. Satisfy your hunger. And Jesus said, I've moved past that realm. The agenda of God is bigger than my personal hunger. Are we together now? Many of us, as prayerful as we are, everything centers around us. Not even your family members. Not even your wife, not even your husband. It's none of your business what happens to anybody. Provided I am hot, then I pray. If I am fine, to hell with what is happening in the body. Respectfully speaking, and with all due respect and honor to the body of Christ, even we men of God, we have this spirit. And we have mentored and taught members to walk like that. Whatever is happening to the church is not your business. Provided koinonia is fine. Provided we are growing. Whether a church is being born, whether whatever is happening, that's none of your business. We are fine. Do not make the mistake of Esther. You know you are matured spiritually when you can receive the pain that is in the heart of Jesus so that you find yourself fasting for three days over an issue that is entirely not your business God can trust you with the salvation of many and say listen in this family in seven days all of them are about to die this is what Satan has programmed and there is the spirit that brings salvation hovers around the family there is no intercessor and it comes to you can I trust you for the redemption of this family? And you can wake up in the night. I can't be trusted. Lord, what are we doing? It's none of your business. You just stand. And while you pray, angels come. And you find out that by prophecy, that family should die. Except, listen, don't fear negative prophecy when there is an intercessor. No, 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 no. No. There are only few prophecies in the Bible that are called written judgments. They can't be changed. A bulk of the things that happen in our lives, it is within the power of the believer to change if you know and understand God's system. Are we together now? <laughs> 